You're listening to The Raw Reaction on the Angry Marks Podcast Network. It's Monday night, and Angry Marks Networks and the VOC Nation are proud to present to you the man, the myth, the legend. I'm talking about Big Dick and his main man, Angry Tentai. Big Dick, how you doing tonight, buddy? Dude, I am doing good, brother. I am doing good. Um, I had very low expectations of Raw, and... Raw exceeded his very low expectations. So, kudos to Raw. I, I don't like that you actually s- somewhat stole what I said to you on before the air, but you worded it a little bit differently, in which I said I had very low expectations for Raw tonight, and they actually surpassed that, and I thought it was a very good show. So it should be good to have a counterpoint point here tonight. But before I start, we're also joined... By our our new junior producer and our producer, as you know, Kentucky's own Killa Kev is behind the glass, our lead producer. But straight out of retirement, we're really excited to introduce junior producer American Pharaoh. And y'all know horses can't talk, so American Pharaoh is behind the glass with Kevin. He just he can't say anything, but he's here with us. We're very we're really happy to have him. So congratulations. Yeah, angry tent, I believe I believe that I believe we need to refer to American Pharaoh as quadruple crown champion and future Sports Illustrated athlete of the year or sportsman of the year. I mean, do you feel he'll win it now? I think now with Ronda Rousey getting knocked out, the top three Sports Illustrated finalists were Ronda Rousey, the Kansas City Royals, go figure. And American Pharaoh, and I, I voted for American Pharaoh. I know you voted for American Pharaoh, and I'd urge all of you to vote for American Pharaoh. But how how far ahead is he at this point? Uh, you know what? Last I checked, he was uh, I think like six or seven percentage points ahead. That was a couple days ago. Um, I'm checking. I was checking on an hourly basis. Um, once he's surpassed the Royals, um, I think every single person in the city of Kansas City voted, possibly multiple times. Uh, so I think that uh, we're at a point now where um, I think that it's just I, I think the lead is going to get uh, larger and larger. It's going to be uh, it's gonna it's gonna be like American Pharaoh winning the Breeders' Cup. It's gonna be a win going away and a smile at the end. I agree with you. I, I'll just say this: American Pharaoh. Um, I, I think Vic, you knew that the further. We got away from the, the, the Kansas City Royals winning the, the, uh, World Series. This was going to happen. And, and when Rousey got knocked out, the individuals just decided to vote for the horse at that point. So good news there. On to wrestling. A guy. The market power is up 44% to 33%. Well, how about it's over. Ronda Rousey, 1%. Poor Ronda. Ronda. You know what? Speaking of which, we'll probably have Ronda on WWE TV soon. Sooner than later, wouldn't you think? You know what? Well, I don't know if they want her on uh, WrestleMania anymore after that train wreck. Yeah, she lost one fight. She'll be back. Any Anyone, you know <laughs> what, man? I, I, I don't know if... Kev, correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, I don't know if, if Nut Up or Shut Up covered this, but, um, you know, I don't know if you guys noticed this, but um, Ronda looked pretty cracked out before the fight. I mean, she didn't look like she trained. She did. She didn't look bad, but she just looked very like gaunt, like as if she didn't lift weights or do any weight training. She looked very like frail. I, I think I think her training was probably a little off, and that and that's been widely speculated. Yeah, it's too bad. I mean, I'm a huge fan. I think she'll be back, don't you? Yeah, she'll be. I mean, she'll definitely be. She said she'll be back. She's she's no, taking I mean, back back like 
as in she'll she'll get oh, yeah. yeah, I mean I think I think she probably had a little too much on her plate because now she's getting ready to go and, and shoot whatever movie she's working on for the next six months and then she's gonna start her training again, so what did Stevie J and, and the Canadian guy have to say about them? About her? I'm not sure. You should tune in to Glove Up or Shut Up every Wednesday here on AngryMarks.com. Cheap if plugs! Only, if only. What's that? I said cheap plugs! No, I know. I should have I dialed in. But hey, who knows? The Divas are pretty hot, so um, they could definitely use Ronda. Um, it, it's a great time right now in, in women's wrestling, obviously. But um, guys, what I, I want to talk about a guy... Who should be up for Sportsman a Year? A guy who stole the show tonight. I'm talking about my main man, Ruru. Ruru is back with his bride, Lana. And I have to say, Ruru was a very pivotal part of tonight's show. And I absolutely loved this Rusev who is madly in love. Um, and how he, he, he just said, love conquered all. He, he, in, 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 his own words said, when we love hard, we fight hard. He brought out Lana. He said, I just want everyone to know we fight hard, but we love harder. And this woman has been with me from the beginning and I am in love and she is my wife. And Lana went on about how when Ruru asked her to marry her, she forgot the past at that moment and realized that was the man she wanted to spend the rest of her life in. It's a modern day love story. Honestly, guys, it's I, th- a I think Ruru. I think Ruru is spending the li- rest of his life in Lana, not Lana in Ruru. Although well, they could be into some kinky shit, who knows? I I love Ruru. I I honestly, I I I love this gimmick. I mean, he is in. Lo- he was smiling from gri- from ear to ear. <coughs> he let us know that now that he's back with Lana, that his new pledge is that. And I I like where they're going with this. And I, I don't, kind of what I said was going to happen. He's going to be a love. He's going to be a lover outside the ring, and and love with all of his heart. But when he's in the ring, he's going to forget about his heart and destroy his competition. <laughs> love it. I couldn't love. I couldn't. I, I, I cheered up a little bit during that. Actually, the Miz. The Miz was so happy to get the exclusive, but you could tell he was very scared of Ruru um in the ring but um I I really thought Ruru was going to kick his kick his butt but he didn't Ruru Ruru's in love man but I'll tell you something that was deplorable immediately after that who comes out Ryback to rain on Ruru's parade I I did not like that at all he cuts Ruru off he said that you know this is this is I'm doing everybody a favor this is seconding Blah, 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 blah. And he ruins Ruru's moment. They have a very, very, very short match that goes literally like three to four minutes long. Goes on the outside. Um, Ruru throws Ryback into the stairs or, or vice versa. It doesn't really matter. And the stairs like poked Lana in like the thigh and she fell and appeared to be injured, and Ruru went to attend to her instead of going in the ring and got counted out. So I don't understand. It's their first match back together. But, you know, hey, he left with her gaga-eyed in love, but Ruru got counted out. How does that sit with you, you Vic? You know what? I think it goes with uh, Ruru's new uh, uh, Ru character as a fighter in the ring and lover out of the ring. He was out of the ring. He saw his true love in distress and he prioritized her. So I don't know. It would be pretty funny if they actually sold it as an angle where literally if he gets knocked out of the ring, like he loses his desire to get in fights or to fight just, just a fight in a match. Well, I don't know I, if they, they're going that angle, but, or it was just a well played, uh, angle here tonight. Is he being punished for the story getting out? Like, are they just jobbing him out? Because, it's his first night back with Lana, and he he basically got just look, to made look like a fool. I mean, I was just surprised by that. So he lost his. Well, season. you know what? I mean, I think I think we see this match at the TLC pay per view, so I think that's why they cut it short and they allowed Ruru to look like a heel by basically chickening out, running away in it, and not having to not giving away an entire match. I mean, they could start it. They built up the feud and. 
guess what? That's going to be on SmackDown. It'll probably be added to the card. I mean, I feel like just with a shorter time period between these pay-per-views, um, I feel like we're sort of throwing matches together pretty quickly. I mean, it's like a 30-second build with no... Or, I mean, this was literally like a maybe one minute coming out and then a less than two-minute match probably. And, okay, five, min- five minutes from Ruru in the ring professing his love to a pay-per-view match. And that's the story. That's the entire story. That's everything. So, I mean, it's a problem where you have... I don't want to see this match. I really don't. No, me me neither. And and you know what? I think we've seen it probably about a half dozen times back when Ruru was undefeated. He's And I think we see the same... I think we see the same result. So, I I don't know. I'll ask Kev the same question. Kev, do you... you, Because I think this is a pivotal angle, honestly. Do you feel like these guys are being punished? No. Interesting. I'm surprised you don't think that. I guess we'll say it really wasn't that big of a deal, but they're definitely building. And I don't, I'm not really excited about this match, but, um, you know, apparently WWF thinks it's, it's something that they should put on, on pay per view. So we'll probably see more of this feud. Also, maybe put them in a ladders match. That could be interesting. Please. I've seen these guys enough. In fact, Ruru lost two weeks ago clean to Ryback. Like, just got pinned by him. I mean, like, it was nothing. Anyway. It's good to see Ruru back. <clears throat> also, out of that love triangle or quad, whatever you want to call it, um, we did see Ziggler again fight Tyler Breeze, which is a rematch from the pay-per-view at Survivor Series. But as we know in WWE, everybody is fit, is 500 and everybody wins five matches and lose five matches. And Tyler Breeze loses to Dolph Ziggler rather cleanly. Um, I, I don't understand. It was a really good match. Uh, Breeze got got kicked out of his shoes with a super kick, which I'm glad to see Ziggler finally win a match with that. But um, there was a nice exchange at the end of about 20 roll ups where no one could could pin each other, and it just kept going back and forth. But you know what? Okay. What's it? Go ahead. Chris Jericho would have put him over. Well, I mean, he didn't he put him over at Survivor Series? I thought Breeze beat him. Yeah, he won at Survivor Series, but. Jericho would job to him forever. Well, that, I mean, honestly, I don't care. I, I don't care either way. So if, if you're going to go with Ziggler beating Breeze, and, and Breeze is going to be good anyway, so I, I don't really necessarily think he has to win right out of the shoot. But, okay, so Survivor Series last year, Ziggler was the man and saved the team for um, the, the good guys. But it's kind of like, okay, well, if you choose to put Ziggler over at Survivor Series, I feel like you're locked in to make sure that in subsequent matches, Ziggler is booked strong and, and continues to win. But no, WWE takes the, their their booking stance of the last 10 years, which is why there's so few fans left. And I, I don't understand like why you didn't pick Ziggler to go over at Survivor Series. Why does he go over here? And what did you accomplish? It's bad booking. Yeah, you know what? You accomplished, okay, we're having another, we're having the same exact match at TLC. Then bill it that way. Then say these two guys, this is the rubber match, it's a ladder match. But they didn't bother doing that. They put Breeze, who's brand new to WWE, not NXT, but they put him in the ring at this time. I mean, really, I don't like that. I, I think he deserves better if they're you don't bring him up to the roster if you're gonna do that. You know, wait. You know, yeah, you or, and they don't tell us they don't tell the story before the match. I mean they could show highlights from their the win at Survivor series to get him over. No, we need to see all 16 times Roman Reigns comes out full intro. I mean, really, dude. I mean, really. Anyway, I digress. Um, you know, I, I was not a fan of, of Breeze losing here. It's not that I, I, again, I do like Tyler Breeze. I do. And I'm not saying, like, oh, he's the man he should win. I can say Ziggler is great, too. I just don't like the fact they weren't consistent, period. But if you're right... Vic and they're gonna have a rematch with them and not a pre-show rematch and maybe some sort of gimmick match and I could live with this, but I know that that's not what they're gonna do. But hey, we'll, we'll see a selfie that. stick on a Paul match. A Judy Bagwell on a stick stick match. Judy Bagwell on my Paul match. Would you, do you remember Judy Bagwell, Buff's mom? Yeah, yeah, she was a uh, quite a pivotal pivotal, bleh, pivotal character in WCW's dying days. Would you? What would it take for you to? Spend the night with her. Uh, I'd say six pack. You do it. Oh yeah, 
she's a, she's a fucking celebrity, man. This is the stuff. You know what? This is the edgy stuff that people want to hear about. This is the kind of stuff that is 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 industry leading and groundbreaking. That story right there. I'm sure you're moved, Kevin. I'm sure you're moved to know that Vic for a six pack would spend the night with Judy Bagwell. And you know what? We had Buff Bagwell on um the 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 Undisputed Wrestling Show here on VOC Nation Angry Marks. And um, you know, I think that you know what, if we're gonna be real journalists, I think we need to tell Buff that. How do you think you would take it? You know what? Um myself like him are both uh Atlanta um residents or greater Atlanta residents. So I think that he'd probably come over to my house and shake my hand, tell me to treat his mama right. I think he'd shake your hand too. I I absolutely think you would. That's a great point. Now let me ask you something. I you you actually segued very nicely to the first segment, which I really enjoyed a lot, um, which was the new day coming out to the ring and introducing their new friend Seamus. I thought that was pretty funny, but they um to get cheap hate, they were making fun of the Steelers. And I like that although the Steelers they didn't play the Falcons, although they lost to the Seahawks, I liked how Xavier Woods go, Well, you know what, yeah, yeah you, the Steelers aren't a good team and you you guys will never be as good as, as the Falcons. I like that he plugged his own team. Usually they plugged, you know, just the cheap heat, the team that beat them. But I yeah, like or the Browns, something like that, because they're rivals. Yeah, that, that's cool. I enjoyed that. I didn't but, even know, that's the thing, I didn't even know I was a Falcons fan. Maybe we'll see him at the next game. Well, yeah, it's insane. Now, you and, you and, um, you and, uh, Xavier are in the comments. Meet me and Judy Bagwell. And Buff Bagwell and Xavier Woods, we could all go to the Falcons game together. I'd love to see you guys do that. You know that? I would. Now, let me let me throw this out there. So, um, I loved Mr. Sheamus coming out in the I, – I think this was purpose, by the way. I do think this is purpose, by the way. He came out in what appeared to be a very cheap suit. And – I wear a lot of suits, so I, I'm now very in tune with fashion. And I noticed, like, the suit was, like, too big for him. And he made a comment that, you know, I, I realize now that I'm a champion, you know, I got to I gotta dress like Triple H and, and get my best suit on. And he just didn't, like, really look like he belonged in the outfit he was in. And he was just trying to knock off the corporate. And I, if that was the intent, <clears throat> I think that's really funny. That because like his character is like you know he's a bar he's a bar fly man he's just a, an ass kicker so I I think that's pretty cool if that's what they intended to do because it did come off that way but I but I don't want to give WWE too much credit but I really enjoyed <laughs> when he got in the ring you know I, and and that's to to the point like I noticed you know how Seth Rollins kind of like was all about image right and he was all about like how he was perceived and he didn't want to be disrespected and he was looking for people to respect him, but for some reason, and we spent some time on this, he didn't want to take the respect from the new day. Remember that? Like they were like trying to show him love and he would never take it, even though, you know, he was looking for people to do that. He just never had the respect of the new day. I love how Seamus's character loves the new day. He went in the ring, hugged them and they were having just a grand old time. He was dancing with them and he was just showing them mad respect. I really enjoyed that segment. How about you? Yeah, you know what? I feel like anything New Day touches is gold these days. I mean, they're they're must see TV. They're pretty much my favorite segment out there. Me too, bro. I just I really enjoyed. I I thought that was just good booking there. How they did. I I just really liked the whole segment. And you know what? And and the whole fi- the whole Sheamus five fifteen thing. I just kicked your arse. I thought that was pretty funny. I don't know. I just thought it was, I thought it was a good work segment. I I didn't expect much there, and it definitely um it definitely exceeded expectations for sure. So cool segment for sure. Um, you know I I I don't know what else to say about that, but um, you know it is what it is. But um, I don't know. I I I I really like New Day with Sheamus. Now I think we found out at the end of the night that's not going to be the way it goes. Seamus introduces his new stable, um, and we'll talk about how he did that in a minute, but Seamus has a new stable, which is comprised of 
Alberto Del Rio, Wade Barrett, and Ruru, and himself, known as the you know, the League of Nations. Big Dick, how do you feel about the League of Nations? You know what? I think we, we touched on this last week. I think Barrett might have been. I guess Barrett, no, Barrett was involved. I'm trying to think. From last week, Del Rio was the only person who wasn't really involved with them. But um, we were thinking it was sort of a European contingent, and then they go ahead and include a Mexican, Mex America um, founder or co-founder, um, Alberto Del Rio. So I think that that's, I think it's good. Um, I don't know where they're going. I mean, it, it looks like a pretty powerful faction, more so based on the fact that there are no real good faces right now, or not many real good faces. I feel like if you look at, okay, who are we expecting to match up on this pay-per-view? And I think the heels steal the spotlight in this, hands down. You know what I was thinking about this, though? I think the heels will go over big in a big way because I, I look at the guys that are in there, right, in this League of Nations. I think Zeb Coulter could win out of this thing huge, and that's why Del Rio is put in there because a lot of these guys aren't great on the mic. Like, Ruru's funny. But he could use a strong mouthpiece. Sheamus is terrible on the mic. And I do think Wade Barrett's really good on the mic. But for some reason, since his Nexus days were over, he's become more of a joke character. Like, Bad News Barrett's just kind of like a, a troll. And he's lost of his ability to really command the mic like he did when he was the leader of the Nexus. So I think Seb Coulter could kind of bring this League of Nations together. And he could be like the manager of champions here. I mean, he could be in a good good position. Yeah, I mean, you know what? I mean, this this stable here right now. I mean, they have what four championships? Yeah, right now, right now. I mean, I think the only thing they're missing. And by the way, that reminds me, did, was Owens on this show? Um, no, he wasn't. Not that I recall. No, and I don't know why that. Have any idea why he wasn't there? No idea. Okay. No, that was a, I was a little surprised. I mean, I feel like he's. Um, I mean, he'll obviously have a match. Barring injury or suspension or something, home and match next pay per view. But uh, I don't know. I just found it weird that he wasn't in a, a show like this. I mean, it seems like yeah. he's going to be well. One of, he's going to be a star on on the new day in the League of Nations. That you know, I don't know. So anyway, what happened was, and this was really the focal point of the show was um, the 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 authority was not happy that Sheamus got jumped by Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns took his title and brought it backstage. And Roman Reigns <clears throat> was backstage kibitzing with Ambrose and the Usos. And Triple H and Stephanie very calmly came up to to um, to Roman Reigns and said, you know what, just give us the belt back. It's not yours. You know, just give it back. And there was really no repercussion at that point. But, of course, Roman Reigns, who really shouldn't have heat with Triple H. <clears throat> I mean, I, I still don't understand why he didn't shake his hand from the beginning. But he basically says, I'm not going to give it back to you. And then Stephanie said, please give it back. And finally, in a heel-like way, Roman Reigns finally gives the belt back after being a wise ass. And um, they said, well, you know what? Since you're having so much fun with us, we're going to have fun with you. And um, you're going to get your world title shot tonight. And, by the way... Um, if you win your title match tonight, you got to do it in five minutes and 15 seconds, as long as you held the, the WWE title. And Roman Reigns looks kind of dejected about that. Like, wow, I mean, how am I going to win in five minutes and 15 seconds? But to make things worse, Stephanie said, yeah, well, you're dragging other people into your, your stuff here. Well, how about this? If you don't win your match in five minutes and 15 seconds, your boys the Usos will not get a tag team title shot. We found that out later in the night. Um, and Ambrose will not get his Intercontinental title shot. So uh, repercussions all around. We go to a match between Sheamus and Roman Reigns. Very uneventful. It was mostly wrestled by Sheamus. But then with about a minute and 30 to go, Roman Reigns, obviously a short match. Roman Reigns throws him up into the stairs, starts dominating on the outside, brings him back into the ring, tries to finish off. Sheamus, and then the Rome, then he's attacked by Ruru of all people. Yeah, there he is again, Ruru. <clears throat> and out of nowhere, here comes Wade Barrett 
and here comes Alberto Del Rio, League of Nations form, forms. Lot there, lot to say there, Big Dick. How do you feel about all that? You know what? I, I like it. I think it's a good. I think it's a good upper mid card group of heels. And yeah, I know Sheamus is the champ right now, but he's sort of a filler in champ. Um, I think that uh, right now, I mean, I think that the, these four they can have a stable for a long time. I mean, these are they're all good wrestlers. They all have great traits. They all have their strengths, have their weaknesses. I think Zeb Coulter will be helpful um, taking over for Barrett as sort of, I mean, Barrett can beat a muscle. Um, Ruru can beat a muscle. And then, I mean, Sheamus is the champ, and Del Rio is more of like a technical wrestler. So, I mean, it's a it's a good foursome, I think. I mean, that could, I, w- I would compare it maybe to like the Radicals of uh, WCW, where, I mean, you have Perry Saturn, who's, pretty darn good in his day. Chris Benoit, we all know. You all know. Fair with him. Yeah, I, I think we all do. And uh, who else was in that? Uh, Eddie Guerrero, a future world champion. And was who else was in that? Radicals. Was it... Uh, oh. Malenko. Who's that? Dean Malenko. Uh, Mal- yeah, Malenko. I would liken Malenko, Dean Malenko very much to uh, Alberto Del Rio as far as a great technical wrestler. Well, with that being said... How, okay, and I'm okay with that, but I I'm curious to how you feel about um, Del Rio and Ruru, and I could kind of I'm okay with Wade Barrett because he's boys with with Sheamus. Why would Ruru and Del Rio agree to essentially being henchmen for Mister Sheamus when we know? Ruru and Del Rio are of that class. And R- Sheamus was very clear that he views Ruru as his right-hand man. His right-hand man, his own words. He didn't say, you know what I mean? Like, he didn't say, like, we're all, like, you know what we want? Like, when Wade Barrett formed the core, that was his, his little group, Wade Barrett was very clear to say that we are a team of equals. There's no leader in the core. And here that wasn't really said. It's clear Sheamus is kind of the leader. Why would Del Rio and Ruru agree to this with their characters? I mean, I think it's to obviously advance the storyline moving forward. I mean, you know what? How excited are you over a Ruru and Ryback match to pay-per-view? I'm not. Yeah, I'm not excited. I'm not excited at all either. How excited are you with that match with... Del Rio on the outside or something something like that. You know what? It makes it a little bit more interesting. <laughs> Not a lot, but uh, and and you know what? It, it sort of gives us a okay. What are what are we expecting as far as run-ins now? I mean, there's more of a chance that you're going to get outside interference from Barrett in this match, or there's going to be some involvement or a possible tag team matches. I mean, I think it gives us something to get us into. 2016 when the uh, cavalry comes in and we start bringing yeah. in back the rock and Cena and whoever else comes back from injury. Um, but yeah, I think that, uh, I don't know. I, I think it's a good use of them. And I think for the short term, next couple, three to six months, I think that this is going to be a good way to go. I mean, WWE, they already have their boring injury champions picked out um, survivor series winners. And I don't see, any of these guys necessarily winning Survivor Series, or no, I'm sorry, not Survivor Series, uh, winning a Royal Rumble, and I could see him in an Elimination Chamber match, but I'm not sure if I could see any of them winning. Yeah, well, they they had they had the um, they had a match tonight as a unit, and they did win, but it was the the Usos, Ambrose, and um, Reigns versus. The New Day and um, and and the League of Nations. But what I thought was interesting about all that is, you know, you put the new, the League of Nations together tonight, and I think by the New Day immediately like joining them to help them, I I really thought it kind of took away from like the the formation of that stable. You know what I mean? And and they won the match, which is good. But I mean, they showed it seven on seven on four. You know. Yeah, I, I don't know. I think it helps. 
I mean, I think it was good because, number one, it's the first time they're wrestling together. And they have, I mean, you have Good New Day, which is pure gold. But why? Number two, I mean, it makes them look, it helps advance each of the seven's individual heel, heel characteristics to be in a seven-on-four match. But why, I mean, if you why have would the stable four, need help from another stable, though? I don't get that. Do you know what I mean? That's kind of weird. Yeah, I think it's more... I think it's more to sort of establish them all as, you know what, we're all, all bad guys, and we're all... Well, it's, like a, it's like a giant NWO, though. It's like, now you have, like, blue and, blue, like, red and white. I mean, you have the authority... I was going to say, careful, careful there. We don't want to get in, uh, in too much trouble. <laughs> no, but think about it. The League of Nations is now aligned with the authority, who's aligned with the New Day, and Kevin Owens is loosely aligned with the authority, so it's kind of like... You know what I mean? Like, all the heels are basically part of the authority. I don't know if I like that. Yeah, but you know what? We'll see how it, we'll see how it gets booked uh, in the coming weeks. I, I think that it, in the future, you're going to see, I mean, you're going to see it more segmented. I think that this tonight was just a, a way to, okay, you know what? Make them uber heels. And if you do have a, let's just say you do have a matchup tonight, and it was the League of Nations versus the Usos, Roman Reigns, and Dean Ambrose. How do you how do you book the finish and where do you go from there? Right. I mean, book if it's a fair match, do you book Ambrose and Reigns and the Usos to win over them, which sort of kills the whole new faction, or do you see him doing something super heel and Triple H sort of pandering to them and allowing them to serve a beat down on the Usos and Reigns and um, Ambrose? So I think that I think that was the rationale. That I don't think that. In the long term, we see many more situations like this, but we'll see. Yeah. Well, so who's coming back next? Who's coming back next? We need some <laughs> new wrestlers here, or somebody for coming out from NXT. What do you mean about what? What do you mean about NXT? Uh, who's the next guy out? Um, yeah. I, I guess I I would think the next up. Geez, um, if I had to think, who's the next up? I mean, it, it, the next up necessarily isn't the one <clears throat> who should be the next up because, like, Finn Balor, for instance, is obviously the guy that should go up next, but he's probably not going to just because of where they're currently using him. <clears throat> um, I, I wouldn't be I, – I don't think he's the most ready, but I wouldn't be surprised if Baron Corbin is the next one up <clears throat> because I, I think they've been looking to bring him up for some time now. Um, and there's really not much going on with him in NXT storylines when he was a very central character. So he's about to do this little feud with Apollo Crews, but I think when this is over, <clears throat> you know, that's it. By the way, have you seen this show where they like follow these guys around? Like, in I think it was on after the pay per view. Breaking Ground. Cool yes. Yeah, yeah I, I I really liked it. Like I was watching it, and I'm like, okay, that's like who all these people are and it's cool to get like a backstory and a little, little bit more about them. So I really liked it. Good show. Good show. If you, if you didn't see this week's NXT, uh, I would strongly urge you to watch it. There was a very awesome segment. It was a divas title segment. Um, a week ago, Eva Marie challenged, um, Bailey for the women's title. And <clears throat> Eva Marie has got nuclear heat. On NXT TV, the crowd, the people there hate, just hate her. And, um, she got a title shot with, um, um, she got a title shot with, um, with, um, with, uh, Bailey. And, um, she, she decided to, um, hire Nia Jax as her personal bodyguard, who's this enormous mountain of a woman. But the story in, in the, in the, the NXT is that the authority has picked Ava Marie to be their champion because she's part of Total Divas. And at the start of the show, Michael Cole came out as the announcer. Um, Charles Robinson showed up as the referee. And I mean, and, and Corey Graves at ringside was really pushing Eva Marie, I mean, it was pretty clear the fix was in, you know? Um, and Bailey was able to overcome all odds and win. And it was, it didn't seem like there was any way she could. And it was just 
a very, very well booked segment and they hid Ava Marie's flaws very, very well. And it just looked like it was just awesome. It was just, it was awesome. It was awesome. It was just like a really cool segment and you just, you, it was you what? what's that buddy? No, I'm sorry. You cut, you cut out there. What were you saying? I said it was a great segment. Okay. But, um, speaking of the divas tonight, Sasha Banks, has a one-on-one with Brie Bella, which was pretty exciting. And um, you know what? I, I was I was excited to see Sasha Banks get the win, albeit with a little interference. But um, man, is Sasha Banks on a roll? Yeah, and I think I think it's interesting. I mean, you like you're a big fan of Sasha. I think that uh, I think they're ultimately building her up to face uh, Charlotte for the championship. But I, I find it interesting that uh, she's. Using outside interference against Bree. I mean, was Nikki not there, um, or any Nikki's of the? Nikki, oh, what happened to her, Nikki? What happened to Nikki? She okay? Um, she's got some kind of injury. I forgot what it was, but she's out for some time. But she did have Alicia Fox with her at ringside, and Alicia Fox is absolutely useless. So um, that that there was really not much to go on there. Um, I'm trying to think of. <clears throat> Of any key points in the match, um, it really wasn't a great match, but um, Sasha got her to tap out. They didn't give him a ton of time, but um, I noticed. You know how she Sasha uses that that move where she puts you on the on the ropes and does the knee the knee, double knee breaker on you. That's kind of like yeah. Albert Del Rio's finisher now. And I was thinking to myself, the, back, the backcracker or the back backstabber or whatever. He uses called. that too. He uses all Sasha Banks' moves. And I was thinking to myself. Why are they letting this J Brown copy off Sasha Banks? Like right now, if it was me, I would job Del Rio to Sasha Banks. I would literally have Sasha Banks backstab into the bank statement and tap out Del Rio. Like he shouldn't he shouldn't be using her moves. He's a J Brown. Yeah, that's that's pretty disrespectful, especially a, a newcomer like Del Rio. I mean, he just I got to WWE what like a couple weeks ago with Zeb yeah, Coulter. Yeah, and he just got WWE, and this is why the guy in the back was saying all these bad things about him. Remember? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's uh, I, I don't know. It's just it's Bush League and bad booking by WWE. I think they need to remember who's been here for a couple of months now and who hasn't. Yeah, and man. That's yeah. the boss. Why would they? Yeah, don't be mean to the boss. You know, but um, I don't know. They're they're all J Brones. They should leave Sasha Banks alone. I love Sasha Banks. Anyway, it is what it is. Yeah, so. yeah. So anyway, that'll be uh, um, interesting to see how that develops. I mean, do you think who who do we have as the female matchup at the next pay per view? Is it going to be well, Paige versus? Yeah, it looks like Paige again versus Charlotte, but they are doing a slow build for Sasha. I don't think she's going to have a match. They might. I don't know if they're they're going to do anything with it. They might have a like. Um, team bad versus team Bella match of some sort, whether it be two on two or three on three. It looks like that might be in the cards, but they haven't announced that yet. Okay. Or I was going to say maybe a Becky Lynch versus, uh, Sasha with the winner getting the champion at the next pay per view or something. Yes. Or championship fight the next night. I don't know. Something to spice it up. Maybe even if you do that on the pre show just to, get it kicked off, have a female match and a male match. On the well, I think they're clearly um, saving Sasha Banks for WrestleMania, in my opinion, but we'll say. Okay, well, I mean, that'd be interesting to see. Um, do you think that she, is, do you think that Paige is still, or I'm sorry, uh, uh, what's her name is still the champion? Charlotte's um, No way. Flair? No. Who do you, think, do you think Paige takes it? And Sasha turns face? I think I think Sasha may just stay heel. I I don't see I I see Charlotte holding it for a while, and when she drops it, it'll be Sasha Banks, and then they'll probably bring up Bailey at that point, and then have her feud with Sasha Banks. Okay. Because I mean, they want to keep WWE is clearly like they're hiding Nikki Bella, like because she can't be the main person, so Nikki Bella faked the injury to get off TV. Um, you know, I I I thought I thought the Charlotte. Becky Lynch match was okay tonight, but once again, they didn't give him a lot of time. I, Charlotte could be the one to go heel because she, what was interesting is Becky Lynch came up to her in the back, and I, I thought 
I thought Becky came off very flaky and said, I want to have a match with you tonight like we did in NXT and tear down the house with you. And Charlotte's like, well, why would you want to, why would you want to do that? And she was like, well, I just, I want to have that match. And I really want an opportunity to take you on, Charlotte. And Charlotte was with standing by her dad, Ric Flair. And she said, you know what? I, I'll, I'll do that. But, um, you know, you know, I'll see you out there, but, um, I, I'm not, Loving the idea of it, but whatever. So they get out there, they have their match, and it's it's going back and forth. But literally, <clears throat> uh, Charlotte took a weird fall, and literally Becky Lynch came running at Charlotte like concerned, and then the referee pushed back Becky Lynch to check Charlotte, and Becky then went over to Ric Flair and was talking to him and said, "Hey, you you think she's all right? Whatever," and then Charlotte quickly rolled up Sh- Becky Lynch and sh- took, shocked her and took her off guard and then backstage said, hey, by the way, we're not in NXT anymore and I did this for your own good because I love you. You got to be ready for anything here and always be ready, you know, and never let your guard down. I, I don't know what that was all about. It was interesting. Um, also, I got to say Charlotte, I think a little too much with the Ric Flair stuff. Like, okay, we know Ric Flair's your dad. Uh, we know you're like kind of, you're kind of doing that gimmick, like where you're copying Ric Flair and the music and all that, which you had in NXT, but you weren't this bad of a Ric Flair ripoff. And you don't need to be. Like, what happened to the whole Charlotte natural selection thing that I'm like genetically better than you? Like, I like that. That's kind of cool that she did in NXT. She's not doing that up on the WWE roster. You know? Yeah, I feel like, I feel like we almost need a, we need a drinking game where, Every time Charlotte woos or make reference to Ric Flair, you take a shot. You'd be drunk. Yeah, oh, absolutely. I mean, it would be it would be worse than Ric Flair before his drive home. When you see Charlotte, like, what do you physically think of her appearance? Like, do you think she's like a Beth Phoenix or like a, a Natalia? Like, what do you like? Do you find her to be like more athletic than the other divas? Like, what's your opinion of her? Um. I say, I mean, body. I, I think she's a more athletic Kelly Kelly because she she definitely has wrestling moves, and she's one of the hottest divas there, uh, in my opinion. I think it goes Nikki and probably her. Um, but yeah, I, I would say a more athletic Kelly Kelly. I mean, I definitely she's definitely not built like Beth Phoenix or China or anybody like that. But I mean, she has, does have she has a good size and she actually she really does know how to wrestle. Okay. I, I think that's cool. I'm surprised. I don't know. To me, she looks like really intimidating. I think she's like a monster compared to the other girls. I don't know. Kev, any thoughts from you on the, on, on Charlotte and how she's been portraying her character in, in WWE? Um, I'm happy with it so far. Do you feel like she should get away from the Ric Flair stuff? Kind of like she was doing down in NXT before she won the title. Yeah, they'll they'll eventually wean her from it. It's not going to last forever. Well, it started when she won the women the NXT Women's title. Like she wasn't doing that before. I but I like the whole gimmick, like that she's genetically better than everybody. Like that whole gimmick she was doing that was kind of cool. I wish they'd go back to that. But yeah, I don't know. I think I mean, like you said earlier. I mean, it'd be interesting to see if she turns uh, if she does turn heel. And I mean, it could just be like. Uh, she just tries to over constantly oversell being Ric Flair's daughter, and I mean, like we joke about it, but I'm just getting annoying with it as far as like nine ninety nine over with it, like yeah, and woo, and the Nature Boy, and just like just literally promos where it's like referred to like ten times, right? So that's sort of what I'm thinking is, uh, I mean, I, I could see her turning heel that way. But again, I mean, it'll be interesting to see how long they keep the belt on her. Um, I'd love to see a match with her and Sasha at uh, WrestleMania. But we'll see. I mean, WWE can book a thousand different, uh, thousand different routes leading up. Yeah, well, what's interesting um, on the show is, you know, they, they, they're booking a lot of stuff around titles, which is always a good thing. I mean, you had, you had Luchas tonight take on the Usos, but as you guys know, um, their title hangs in the balance because of Roman Reigns didn't get it done in 515. So will they actually get their match? Um, 
the Luchas and Usos probably would have been a cool match to see because it's face on face, but it got broken up by the New Day and it ended in a double DQ um, or a thrown out match. So that that was kind of a bust. But um, the only other segment tonight that really we want to talk about, and it's the last segment, was the Dudleys calling out um, the Wyatts and the vicious beatdown they took on both Raw and SmackDown. The Dudleys acknowledged it, that they got beat and jobbed and then beaten again. And now they're going to put each one of the, the, the Wyatts through a table. None other than Tommy Dreamer comes out to even up the odds. And the announcers are going off on the ECW stuff, which, you know, do we really need to go through all this again? I don't know. Um, they eventually accidentally put Bray Wyatt through a table and then the faces of all people ran away. Odd segment. Any thoughts? Yeah. Um, I, I was actually hoping that there would be another member of the uh, ECW universe come out. I don't know if Taz has um, had the, I don't know. I don't know if Chad's or Taz has gotten a wrestling shape or, who else did raise that would still get a pop? I mean, Tommy Dreamer was pretty awesome. Yep. But, I mean, at the same time, I think that, okay, does he really even to score against the Wyatts? I mean, they're giants compared yes. to uh, compared to the Dudleys. I mean, they're big. I think you need some size here. And, again, I'm not sure who that is. Maybe a Kane face turn. Like a just a fully evolved face turn if Undertaker's not coming back, and so you have somebody like that, or if you bring up somebody from NX or NXT, uh, who's that big guy who uh, who got hurt when he was coming up? This was like a year ago. He got hurt pretty bad, messed his leg up, I think. Who? Uh, um, the guy with like he had like red hair or something. He's coming up, I think. To they were gonna bring him up to like Feud with Cena, I think. What's his name? Um. He was, wrestling in a, he was wrestling as a chicken for a while, I think. Sami Zayn? Yeah. I mean, he's a pretty big guy. Not really. No, nah, I thought he, I always thought he was like at least like six, four, six, five. Maybe he's not. not. He's a skinny guy, but I, I don't know. Yeah. Or, I, I, you know what? I mean, I'd almost ra- like to see somebody like Samoa Joe come in and team up with him. And, I mean, they can fill the backstory in, but, I mean, Samoa Joe, he's – not a huge guy, but I think that he has, he sort of has like the badass reputation where he can hop into a feud like this and yes. get involved. And in, okay, Tommy Dreamer, the Dudleys versus the Wyatts four on four. I could see be, being an entertaining match. Right. So if- I don't know. We'll see. I mean, there's still time. They only have three. Do you think there's a spot for male nudity on WWE pay-per-view since anything goes? Uh, what, what are you thinking? Like, are you thinking right back in the shower? I'm thinking... Or uh, Do you remember the old tuxedo matches? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. What about, like, a... You know, a, a, the idea of of a match like that where where you strip your opponent of his tuxedo, but he's absolutely nude. 100%. Yeah, 100%. Penis. You see it all. Would you like that? That would be, uh, that that would be interesting. Um, would demolition be involved at all? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Demolition would be involved. I mean, they're the Kings of nudity. Yeah, you know what? I was going to say they could actually possibly do a tag match, possibly them and Big Dick Johnson, and uh, versus and, or them versus Big Dick Johnson and maybe Rusev because he has a large membership. Do you like Do you like that your your moniker here is somewhat the same as Big Dick Johnson because you're Big Dick? I do, I do. That's uh, sort of where I thought the the nickname originated from. No, it's just people call me a young Big Dick Johnson. Vic sounds like Big Dick, you know. Yeah, you, that's probably about right too. Um, Some, it doesn't somebody rhyme. call you enormous Dick. Yes, somebody call people call me a dickhead. Actually, many people. Who calls you? I don't call you that. I think you're an amazing guy. 
And people. People who don't know any better. Does Kill Kev call you a dickhead? Probably when I'm not on Raw Reaction. But as I'm falling asleep during half of our shows. I can see that. I can see that. He, Kill Kev's a poor character, so I can see that. Yeah, and I mean, uh, I, I could definitely see him uttering it under his breath also. Yeah, well, you know what, man? Now that we have the VOC Nation behind us with Angry Parks, all is, all is, all is found. I mean, we're really lucky to be here. You know, I was looking for a community to be part of, you know, one that featured wrestling, and I feel like I'm part of it now. Yeah, and you know what's really important? I mean, pretty soon we're going to be at a point where we're getting more um, listeners than Raw. Oh, I think I think that's I think I, I'm surprised it's not happening already. I mean, I would think we would. I mean, you know, if only there was a website where we could go and talk about wrestling and things like that, it would be pretty exciting. You know, like a community, so to speak. You know, where like people like us could talk about wrestling, and maybe if I was like an independent wrestler, I could find like bookings at that type of website. But you know what? There's nothing like that. We're not going to find anything like that. But if there was, I'd love to know the website. So, I mean, if you're, if you're looking for work, would, would you say? Yeah. I mean, like if you're looking to work yourself independently, or yeah, do you think like, Buff Bagwell could possibly utilize that site to well, book himself as AJ Glass? Well, if wrestle, work, and do other things, yeah, I think I can see that. Interesting. I, can see that. I, like, where, I like where it heads at. I, I, it would be a social site, you know, for us, the wrestling fans. Ah, so like a Craigslist. Yeah, like a Craigslist, but for but not for for casual encounters, but for for wrestling. Maybe we didn't even have a little apartment wrestling yeah. there, you know. But it is what it is. I don't know. I don't know, bro. That's all I got for this week. But um, I thought it was a good show. That's yeah, it. yeah. You know, I I liked it. Didn't love it. I'd give it a over. I was thinking it was going to get about a three. I'd give it a solid five to six. I'll give it a six. Um just because the New Day segments were pretty cool. Um, I, d- I don't like the way they're leading up to half of these matches on the pay-per-view. I get we have the holiday and short turnaround and sort of a lot of people out and the holidays coming up and everything, but I feel like they're rushing a lot of the matches. And I, I don't like it. I wish there was like a little bit more of a build or even tell us, tell us a story before this comes up to lead us into okay. This is why I want I want to see Dolph Ziggler versus um, what's his name uh, Prince Pretty at the next pay per view. Holiday celebrate. If we took a holiday, if we took some time to celebrate, we'd be all right. A very wise yeah. woman for that. Yes, she she is a legend and a life life changer. Um, yeah, well that's all. So I, I, I like it. What are your uh, what are your thoughts on how the pay per view shaking up? I uh, I guess I mean <clears throat> we know it's going to be Reigns versus Sheamus and um, uh, Owens versus Ambrose. Still, is that what it's looking like? Sounds about right. Owens and Ambrose. Yes, I think Owens retains. I think Reigns wins the title. I think that's the straight best up. match of the pay per view. But I'm just telling you, I think Reigns wins the title straight up. What are I your do, thoughts? Uh, what's that? That's the best. Or I think uh, Owens Ambrose is the best match by far of the pay per view. Not the main event, but I think that you can do whatever type of match you want with him. And I think that you're going to see probably at least five new slash innovative moves each. Okay, I can see that. <coughs> I mean, two, I think they're two of the most creative superstars we have right now, um, as far as just sort of innovative stuff. And I mean, if they, I could see him putting on a half-hour match. So, what do you think, Reigns, Ambrose, and Usos walk away with titles, or what? Please, God, no, not the Usos. And I think you know what? I think New Day is so over that they're not going to give up the titles. I think Sheamus keeps the belt. I don't know about Sheamus keeping the belt. Uh, that's the one that I'm questioning. And again, I don't know how. I don't know how you work around. I mean, maybe just a. I think that maybe Sheamus wins. Or loses by DQ, so keeps the title. I miss the old Seamus theme music. Yeah, I don't know. I wish he'd literally just shave. 
Why? A little. Not 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 the. I don't like the. I don't like the Lou Albano look. Why? I don't know. I think it was Lou Albano's look. Okay. All right. All right. Well, I don't know. Kill Kev. Anything you want to add? Well, I'm going to plug tomorrow night's episode of the Undisputed Wrestling Show. In the first oh. hour, we're gonna we're gonna have this kid on. Um, you you might have you might you might have heard of him working around a couple of places. Uh, some some guy named Bob Holly. Hardcore Holly. Spark, spark plug Bob Holly. Yeah, he he he's Sparky. He's gonna get mad. <laughs> he just might. He's gonna be on the first Wait. hour. But what's that? I was gonna say Spark. Who is it? Um, it was Sparky, and who is the other one? The other one's dead, right? What other one? Crash um, Holly. This... Oh, Crash Holly? Yeah, unfortunately, he passed away several years ago. I still, they were one of my favorite tag teams for a very short period of time, where they would come down to the ring carrying scales and claim to be like 680 pounds between the two of them and call themselves super heavyweights. That was one of my favorite for a short time tag teams when they were continuing with that angle. I liked it. That's movie still at the scale. Me too. Well, it was we, for heavyweights. Well, that's <laughs> it. That's who we got in the first hour, Hardcore Holly. But sec, second hour, we we are we are just a few episodes away from celebrating the 100th episode of the Undisputed Wrestling Show on Angry Marks. So kicking it off in December, our big second hour guest. You requested him, Angry Tenzai. We Bobby got Star. him back. Bobby Star. No. Bigger. Better. More pimping. Are you talking about Devin Sturgis? Indeed. And he's going to be on the Undisputed Wrestling Show tomorrow night to talk with Q-Ball Carmichael and Drew Skills and Will Huckabee and Zane Paisley. Tune in at 9 p.m. Be there or be the effing square. AngryMarks.com Angry Parks forever. Angry Joseph Parks? Angry Joseph Parks. Dude, when is Joseph Parks going to be on? Yeah, when is Joseph Parks going to be on? Um, you know, let, you know he's accepting independent bookings right now, probably. He will be on next week. We're gonna have a best on. We have him for the first hour of the Undisputed ne- Wrestling Show next week, December eighth. Are you serious? I'm serious. And wow, then, can, can we do that show? Can me and Angry Times I do the show? And then uh, I think it's gonna be a little full. But you can. I want to. I want to ask him. Le- can I call in and ask him legal advice? No, I don't think you can call in. Um, you can email your questions in, though. We'll, we'll see if we can get a few of those in. Okay, yeah, I, I want to ask him for some legal advice. And then and then episode 100, which will be December 15th, coming back to Angry Marks and the Undisputed Wrestling Show, it is your undisputed, multi-time, multi-champion, the Beast, Dan Severn. Yeah, he's been on a couple times. He's a man. So there's what you got to look forward to in the next couple of weeks. The beast, Dick Roth. There's a beast in my pants, man. You, All right, well, you, cool. you should probably get that checked out. It, it's probably encephalitis. Oh, God. <laughs> anyway, good stuff. I, I appreciate everybody coming on tonight. But um, that's all I got. Big Dick, that's all you got, I presume. And that's all you got, Kev. So why don't we take this one out? Vic, why don't you close us up tonight, buddy? Killer Kev, Angry Tensai, it has been real. I'm ready for some TLC, and I'm not talking about the uh, the, the gigolo kind. <laughs>